basilica and the capital look very much alike. So let's get this up. Let's get this up and we'll show it. Okay, Capitol building. Um, Capitol building, BC. We'll do this live. Grace has now moved to the floor. I'm sure she'll be back. Okay. Is this a picture? Can I like, can I? Okay. Let's see. Let's, uh, are they going to let me like see the picture? No, of course not. Oh, wait, they, they're, they're, they're doing it. Let's see if this comes up here. Okay, good. We have it now. Okay, so let's do a share screen just so we can give you a visual here because I think it's important for you to kind of partially see what I saw to give you a visual. Share screen. No, we want Chrome. Here we go. Okay, share. So here is St. Peter's Basilica. The Capitol Building Dome and St. Peter's Basilica Dome look very similar. So there's St. Peter's Basilica, I believe, which is in Vatican City, um, if I'm not mistaken. And then, let's see if we can switch here. Okay, stop screen, and then we're going to share with you the Capitol Building. Capitol Building, D.C. See how the dome looks very, these two domes look very similar. So I wanted to just show you that briefly so you can see um, what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's stop screen. Now, so I'm seeing th this dome, okay? So I'm seeing it, I'm seeing, um, it was probably a representation of both maybe in one because they tied together. But I see the dome and then came and perched atop the dome was this very large demon. It had the head of a jackal, a muscular body of a, of a man, and it spread its very large and vast wings out. It was all brown. Its body was all brown. Um, its head looked a little hairy, like the hair of a jackal or a wolf or a dog. And then its wings were a lighter color brown. And it just has kind of like descend and just perched there. Perched there and opened its wings. And I flew up when I saw this and went, dear God, what did I see? You know what I mean? Like, that's my first thought sometimes. God has to be, it has to laugh. Um at my reactions to these things sometimes, you know, because I still am human. So even though the Lord gets you accustomed to seeing these things, you're still sometimes like, what did I see? And so I thought about this and I prayed about this. And so then what happens is I call Barbara. I call Barbara because we, we seem to do very well together breaking down dreams. The Lord gives her, the Lord gives me, we put it together and, and we have, you know, a finished product, praise God, that we can give you. Okay. So I call her and I go, I got to tell you this. You know what I mean? Like, I got to tell you what I just saw. So anyway, she confirmed it because she said she didn't tell me this, but for days she had been hearing Petros Romanos, Peter the Roman, who is supposed to be like, I guess, you know, the last pope or the most wicked pope or maybe the false prophet. Um, but she'd just been hearing this. So me saying this was a confirmation of, of the fact that she, from the Lord, when she was in prayer, was picking up on this. And so basically, um, we, get, we begin to now pray uh, and break this down. Uh, and so I'm going to break this down for you. But before I do this, what I can do, I'm going to read to you. Now, when was the, I want to give you the date of this movie because, well, I like to do that because, you know, there's it's like a time stamp. So, um, okay. There was a movie that came out. May 15th, 2009. Okay. Let me get this back up. 
May 15th, 2009. I'm going to put that in here because it's time stamped. So May 15th, 2009. So it is the year after the big crash in 2008, which was a Shemitah year. The year after that Shemitah year happens and you have the banking crisis that occurred the year after, interestingly enough, this movie is released. I'm going to read to you the plot of this movie because it has a lot to do with what's going on now. This is from 2009. What I saw, and we're going to tie this all together with the capital um, and the other factors that are going on here. So, Angels and Demons was the movie. The Catholic Church mourns the sudden death of Pope Pius XVI and prepares for the papal conclave to elect his successor in Vatican City. Father Patrick McKenna, the um, Camerlengo, which I'm not sure what that is, but takes t uh, temporary control of the Vatican during the sede of the Conte period, which I guess is the vacant seat. I believe that means in Italian. Meanwhile, at CERN, Yes, CERN is brought up in 2009. Scientists, Father Silvano Bentivoglio and Dr. Vittoria Vetra create three canisters of antimatter. As Vetra goes to evaluate the experiment, she discovers that Silvano has been murdered and one of the canisters was stolen. Shortly thereafter, four of the preferit, I think it's called preferiti, the favored candidate or preferred, preferetti means preferred, I believe in Italian. So four of the preferred, the favored candidates to be elected Pope are kidnapped by a man claiming to represent the Illuminati. I'm not kidding you. This movie came out in 2009. He sends the Vatican a warning claiming he will murder each of the Cardinals from 8 p.m. to midnight when the stolen antimatter will explode and destroy the city. The antimatter is hidden somewhere within. Having attracted the church's attention, after searching for the Priory of Sion in Paris and London, American symbologist professor Robert Langdon is brought to the Vatican to help. After listening to the assassin's threat, he deduces that the four cardinals will be killed on the four altars of the Path of Illumination in locations relevant to the classic elements. McKenna gives Langdon access to the Vatican's secret archives to research this against the wishes of Commander Richter, head of the Swiss Guard. Look at all the players in this movie. Langdon and Dr. Vetra examine Galileo, Galilee's banned book, okay? Uh, be a banned book finding clues to the first altar. Initially believing it to be at the Pantheon, they eventually discovered it to be um, at the, uh, I think it's called the Higgy Chapel. Though they rush to the chapel, accompanied by Ernesto Olivetti and Claudio Vincenzi of the Corps of uh, Gender Marie of the Vatican City, which I guess that's the police within Vatican City, they are too late to save Cardinal Ebner, who was already found deceased. Um, and there was an ambiogram, an ambiogramic uh, word that says Earth. Now, what is an ambiogram? The name of the movie is called Angels and Demons. And now I'm only talking about this to connect this because these wicked people will put things out way before in the form of movies and other things to announce before they do this stuff. And so this is the only reason I'm even taking the time to go over this because Hollywood is a cesspool. However, the enemy sometimes will expose his hands ahead of time. So anyway, what is an, uh, an ambigram? So we understand what this, right? Or ambi uh, ambigrammatic word. I have an example of it. Let me see here. And then we'll continue with this. Okay, we'll continue with um, me reading this and going into everything else. So um, an ambigram example. What happens with an ambigram is when you spell it one way and you flip it upside down, it's the same word. So let me try to get this up for you and we'll share screen here. So I can, I'm just going to pick a very mundane word here because we don't want to, you know. So share screen. Here's an ambigram. So that, you see the year? So you see all the way to the right. 
there is the Y-E-A-H. Let me see if I can get a close-up on this for you because I would rather do that. Here, let's stop share and let's share it again. And let's just focus on that because there's too many of them on that screen. And I don't know what one is saying. Um, and so basically, okay, this is good. It's Miriam Webster. Perfect. Okay. And we can, we can zoom in on this. Okay. So you see the word, yeah, that's here. Y-E-A-H. If you look at it upside down, it spells the same word. Y-E-A-H. Yeah. So either when you read it forwards or flipped, it's the same word. Okay. So that's an ambigram. Okay. Just so everybody gets um, a good hold on what this is. So the, 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 in this movie, the the, 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 in the the wicked individual that is helping to do this is using ambigrams. Okay. And the first word is earth following the clue left by, um, I guess another, this uh, Langdon discovers the second um, altar and it goes on and on to, to, to where it goes through four cardinals. This happening for earth, all these ambigrams, earth, air, fire, and water. So you've got now four cardinals that are, or, or those in line to be Pope, to be killed. Now, what happens is at the end of this movie, um, McKenna, remember McKenna who took over uh, while the seat was vacated of the Pope and he became the acting Pope? Well, he, when they discover the antimatter, he happens to be a helicopter pilot and he takes the antimatter up in the helicopter to save the city, jumps out of it in the parachute in a heroic act, and now they want to make him Pope. The problem is Langdon discovers that McKenna is the one behind all the killings because he wanted to be Pope. So he had all the other ones that were much more pure than he uh, killed so he could end up becoming Pope. Um, and then basically at the end, he becomes no more. And so this is the movie. So why am I going into this? Well, because this synopsis touches on many things we see happening now. 13 years later, 13 years later, this synopsis was given. I mean, it happened. 13 years ago, this happened. 13 years later, we see a lot of this going on. Okay. So getting back to the dream now, I'm just giving you sort of a premise here for something on one side of the coin, because there's two sides of the coin here. Okay. okay. Now, the dream where I saw the perch atop the dome, which identifies the St. Peter's Basilica and the Capitol. So this spirit, this wicked spirit I saw, is a territorial spirit, and it's protecting something like a chicken protects an egg. It has perched there to guard the dome. Something there is being threatened. The dome is like an egg. This spirit is protecting what's under the dome, potentially. It is perched at the highest place, the high place on the dome. So something is getting ready to manifest itself, I believe, in both St. Peter's Basilica Vatican City and the capital in D.C., and this territorial spirit is guarding that area. They are perverting everything that the Lord said to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So Jesus Christ said this to Peter. They are trying to pervert this in every possible way. Upon this rock, Jesus is the rock. So he's saying upon himself, he will build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it because Jesus died, rose again and is seated at the right hand of the father. Now, there is questions surrounding Peter the Roman, Petros Romanos, the last pope. Will it be the false prophet? It'll be the most wicked pope um, that ever was. And he will work in conjunction with the Antichrist, okay? So you have to have a man of sin. The man of sin has to be revealed. But for an example of this, okay? To give you an example of how this would come in, Hitler claimed to be Catholic, 
Okay, so we're not trying to attack Catholics because there's a lot of wonderful ones out there. But he was corrupted. He he represented the corrupt side of it, the wicked side of it that we will see, um, you know, potentially arise in Revelation. He was a Catholic evil dictator that viciously attempted to destroy the Jewish people, claiming it was a commission from God when it was not. It was Satan. And if you if you spell his name backwards... If you spell his name backwards, you get R E L T I H, Relty, okay, which means the one who leads and does good. You spell his name forwards, and you have a ruthless evil dictator. This is how the Antichrist, this is a shadow of how the Antichrist will come in. He will come in to lead and do good, to deceive the people, to get their trust. And then it's going to switch. And the real man of sin, what he really is, will be revealed as the most ruthless dictator ever. So I find that interesting about his name because it is a shadow of what you'll see happen with the, with, with, basically with the Antichrist. He comes in one way, it flips, he's the complete opposite. And that basically... It, is the embodiment of this person's name because you spell it backwards, you get the one who leads it does good, you spell it forwards, you get a ruthless, wicked dictator. Now, I just wanted to point that out because this is how they arise and they always seem to work with the religion. So these ruthless dictators always seem to, in some corrupt way, work with the religion just remember that okay those who want to do wickedness they, they tend to try to do that um now back to the dream so the capital in dc and saint peter's basilica which i showed at the beginning are mimicking each other within vatican city they have some sort of enforcing of laws as does the capital there is some sort of capital police some sort of Vatican police, some sort of half enforcing of the laws going on. This wicked spirit is involved in both. It has to do not only with the shedding of innocent blood, but it also has to do with the change of leadership that is set to occur both in the capital and at the Vatican. This territorial demonic spirit is trying to keep this claim. It is trying desperately to keep its claim. Um, and it's interesting because Barbara heard the word venal, V-E-N-A-L, and saying that this spirit is venal. And venal means motivated by susceptibility to bribery. So this demon has to do with the bribery, greed, temptation, and power because they all work in tandem with each other. He is guarding the corrupt transactional agreements where bribery is exchanged for power and influence. However, that is not the only reason he has perched upon both those places. This goes back to a dream and a prophecy I was given. And we're going to go into that, and then we're going to tie it all in together. It goes back to the dream with the spirit of Antichrist and the European Union I just spoke about. I think it was this past week or the week prior. I think it was this past week. Um, as the Vatican is at the center of their dealings with the EU, as the capital of D.C. is at the center of many dealings, okay? And the EU is set to prematurely through the enemy let that spirit of antichrist in because of this there is someone at the vatican who is coming ready to pass it is a prefabrication of events of revelation putting the cart before the horse okay so the vatican represents like the mecca of religions all over the world controlling the banking system stores globally on a local level as well their tentacles are there okay so so this is what it represents now who is this this evil spirit who really was this evil spirit no not venial venal v-e-n-a-l that's what it, venial is different than venal so there's two different words actually venal means susceptible to bribery so who was this, this, what I saw? Well, I'm going to tell you. There is a certain false god of Egypt that looks very similar to who I saw. And its name is Anubis, who is the false Egyptian god of embalming, embalming and accompanying, accompanying dead kings into the underworld. 
the false god of the dead, the dead. Now I want to take you back to a word that I've spoken about this. I want to take you back to a word that was given November 26, 2019. Okay, so we're going on almost three years in November. This word was given. Um, this was given, and this was the excerpt from that word. They are not the ringmaster, says the Lord. They are indeed the fools and the clowns in a very convoluted charade that has been put on display to open the eyes wide of the people and yanking up by the root for all to see the true motivation of these false excavations that the enemy's agents have taken part in a witch hunt where they shall now become the hunted for their attempting to hunt my children down and take them down, says the Lord of hosts. How dare they? The hunter shall now become the hunted. So, September 14th, 2020. These are the excerpts from these words. The hunt is on, says the Lord. The hunt is on. The hunter shall suddenly switch in the blink of an eye and become the hunted. For I, the Lord God, am reversing the current. I am reversing the current. Okay. When something is hunted down... What happens? It is killed. It is assassinated. It is caught. The hunter shall become the hunted. Someone attached to the kingdom of darkness is about to die. Actually, a recognizable someone or someone. That's why that demon is there. It's trying to stake its claim. It is a demon as well that has to do with death, okay, because of what it looked like and what it is related back to Egypt. Connected to the Capitol in D.C. and at the Vatican. These events will happen in tandem. Whatever happens, these events will happen in tandem in these two places. Two, de uh, two deaths of some kind in tandem of a like nature causing potentially interims, plural, leader, interim leaders to arise or attempt to arise. However, their calculations are off and there is a, a, a surprise set to arise in both. Now we have to go back. Now that we know these two words, we have to go back to a dream, okay, that I had in early 2021. And I will tell you, when I give that word in November 2019, the hunter shall become the hunted, that headline a year later was carried, praise God, worldwide. So... You know, but that was just the beginning of it. That was the precursor. Okay. So now we have to go back to the dream that I had in early 2021 that the Lord gave me, where I saw um, Mr. Biden, Joe, so sick in bed. And remember, Obama was at his bedside, right? I was facing the bed. Obama was to the right side of the head of the bed. Biden's family was nowhere to be found in this dream. Biden appeared grief stricken, like he could not go on living. He appeared very sick. There were three different pairs of shoes on the floor. Barbara had said to me that represents three former leaders before them. And Obama at his bedside, dressed in a nice suit and ready. Excited at the condition of Biden. There was a crowd of Middle Eastern people gathered around waiting as well, potentially representing different countries that are in cahoots with this. Um, could have been some Middle Eastern, some European. It could have been a mix. And a piece of apricot candy, known more commonly as Turkish delight, was on the bed. It was on the left side of the bed. It was on the left, the left side of the bed. And I fought through that crowd and I reached and snatched the candy away from them and I ate it so they couldn't have it. They weren't going to get that candy. That candy represented a celebration and a victory as it is prevalent, especially in the Muslim and Middle Eastern culture, um, to give out candy when a great victory is won. And it was snatched away from them. Now, what did I represent in that dream? Well, two different things. I represented we the people fighting through and rising up and snatching it away from them. And I also represented the prophetic rising up and be utilized by God to destroy their plans. Now, here's the question with what we know, with what is sitting on these domes, 
with what we know this wicked entity is, with what we know about these prophetic words given now, with what we know about this dream given, with what we know about the premise of this movie. Um, that just I went into just part of the synopsis because I didn't want to uh, read it all. Um, what is going on here? How do you get Joe Biden to not want to continue being the front man of the puppet? How do you get him grief stricken in bed and get him out of the way? Well, he's lost one son already, Bo, to cancer. Hunter is his only living son. The hunter shall become the hunted. When you hunt something, you are looking to eradicate it. You are looking to take it down, okay? The hunter shall become the hunted. You don't, if you want to get him in bed like that, for these wicked people that are devouring each other because demons are territorial, you just don't send his son to jail. One would completely have to eliminate him and leave Biden with no sons, as Hunter has become an enormous liability to their plan. And when one becomes an enormous liability to their plan, this is how the kingdom of dark work, darkness works, they try to destroy them. That is how this works. And since we are dealing as well, so we're not only dealing with that, but we're dealing with what appears to be this Egyptian false god of the dead or an evil spirit that's in the vein of that, okay? Now, interestingly enough, if we go back to the book of Exodus, if we go back to the book of Exodus, if you remember, Pharaoh did not want to let the Jews go. Pharaoh ordered the death of the Hebrew babies, the males, the death of the males. He was promoting a campaign of death. He was supporting the killing of babies to try to maintain his power. And when the last plague came upon Pharaoh, it was the taking of his son for the wage that was paid to Pharaoh because the wages of sin is death. And so when Pharaoh was given that wage, why? Because he dug in his heels and kept trying to kill off the people of God. He was unremorseful about the babies. He was unremorseful about the people of God. He dug in his heels and the last plague exacted on him like a tax for the wage of what he, he did. The sin that he did, the wage was the death of his own son. And if you're dealing with a false God that is in that Egyptian realm and he has showed up it looks as if a wage is about to be exacted on someone for the sin that has been so defiantly continued to be committed you see what i'm saying because why else would it be there it's trying to keep its territory it's trying to keep its stake in this it's trying to keep it going and then you have the lord on the other side that is ready to exact the wage give the wage exact the tax and give the wage for the sin so and we see it on the flip now let's do the flip side of the coin you have the vatican that has also been involved in the shedding of innocent blood i saw what went on the lord took me in 2018 in a dream under the vatican I saw every detestable thing that goes on down there. Witches, warlocks, demons, court jesters, huge long catacombs and hallways. I was there and I saw it and they were all congregating. They also have been involved heavily in the shedding of innocent blood. Just like Pharaoh. 
So a wage similar to the one at the capital must be given them also for the wage of sin is death. So the wage must be given to them also for how they have dug in their heels and continue to do very, very wicked, dark, abominable and detestable to God, the things they've done in the capital and at the Vatican. And a similar wage must be given to them for what they've done. It's running in tandem. These two events, however they happen, and whoever they happen to, will run in tandem to each other. Why is this happening now? Because judgment from the throne of God has gone out into the earth. And people go, well, God doesn't judge. He only judges on the great uh, uh, the great judgment in, in Revelation, the great white throne judgment. God is a righteous judge. That is one of his names. He is the righteous judge, which means if he is still on his throne ruling as the king of kings, he is still judging. He is raising up leaders and he's bringing them down. He's sending judgment out into the earth. He's writing scrolls of judgment and having the holy angels carry them into the earth. And so judgment against the wicked has gone out in this season into the earth. It's that's why the European Union is trying to prematurely bring in the spirit of Antichrist because they're going to be weakened. Judgment, it won't work ultimately, but they're trying to prematurely put the cart before the horse here. But judgment has gone out into the earth in this season, which means the wage. You see, there was an appointed time for Pharaoh. There was an appointed time. God gave him time. God gave him mercy when he didn't deserve it. And when the appointed time came for the wage to be paid, it was paid. And that entire army of Egypt, the superpower of the world, was broken by God at the Red Sea. And now we have the same time with the overturning of Roe versus Wade and the Lord sending judgment into the earth and exacting the wage against the wicked for the killing of the innocent, for the, for the promotion of the destruction of children, for the promotion of the destruction of the people of God, the wage in this season is being given to them. So it was, we're seeing similar now. And this is why I saw what I saw perched on the dome. The dome kind of looks like half of an egg. That's why it looks like it's like perch guarding an egg because it's trying to keep its claim desperately there. Um, and it also has shown up because you're about to potentially see not one death, but two. Um, running in tandem to each other, or not one removal, but two removals running in tandem to each other. Um, you know, one or the other here. Um, or we may see a little bit of both. But if it's there, then something's up. Something big is about to happen. So I just wanted to share this with you today and come on and I've been fighting through whatever I'm fighting through to do this and yes we are going in to the 50th year which is the jubilee when the slaves are set free when what is stolen has to be restored this is why you see these things happening now this is why so basically We have to be in prayer and be ready because this could cause total upheaval in two parts of the world that are connected by a vein. The capital and St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City are connected by a vein. They're connected by a vein that the kingdom of darkness runs back and forth, okay, to try to maintain a very strategic position in two parts of the world. Now, what they don't plan on is the surprise God has for them. Because like I said, judgment has gone out into the earth. So what they're not counting on is the surprise that God has for them. Pharaoh thought Baal opened the sea for him. The surprise was God really opened the sea to bring deliverance and judgment at the same time. Deliver his people and judge Egypt. So there's a surprise here on both sides of the coin. 
when it comes to this, that is going to emerge. Now, if the Lord gives more detail on this surprise, as things start to progress, then we'll absolutely talk about it. But it's going to be a surprise. You know what I mean? This is going to be a, a wrench in there plans that they didn't see coming. Uh, they miscalculated because they didn't um, they didn't calculate right the power of Almighty God and the way he rules in the earth and the way he rules from his throne and the judgments he exacts into the earth. They don't count on this. So they have miscalculated here just as Pharaoh miscalculated when he decided to go after the Jews after God Ten plagues. You think Pharaoh would have had enough? But nope. Those territorial spirits, those false Egyptian spirits, those rulers of darkness of this world wanted to keep their claim on Israel. They So they wouldn't rise up to be the nation they are. They desperately wanted that claim. So they stirred up Pharaoh to go back after them one more time. And that's where the Lord set the trap and called out Baal. Right there at the Red Sea, called out Baal, called out those Egyptian wicked spirits, called them out and set the trap. So there are some traps that have been set right now. And there are some wages that are being paid right now. And you're going to see these things happen in tandem in two parts of the world. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, and praise God that God is a God that warns so we can be in prayer, so we can watch.